There's no point in burning up all this soil getting carbon if you're just going to lose it anyways. In this video, we'll be going over uh, the main ways that we can lose soil organic carbon um, on our farms, uh, as well as the things we can uh, stop doing that specifically removes our soil organic carbon um, or causes it to be lost. My name is Phil Simmons, this is Agriculture Explained, uh, and uh, we're currently doing a soil organic carbon course, so you can check out the whole course on our website at agrisol.com.au. You'll find uh, this video as well as all the other videos we've made as well as supplementary material. So if you like that, make sure to go check it out on the website or we also have a um, playlist on YouTube so you can watch it for free. Um, again, completely free. There's not even email opt-in, it's just free information. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. So there's only really two ways that soil organic carbon can be lost, um, of which it turns into carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So the first one is microbial decay, which is where microbes use that soil organic carbon or matter as uh, an energy source. Um, and the other one is oxidation. Now oxidation is similar to um, burning. So if you think of uh, when you burn a stick or some wood, uh, it loses carbon. So in a similar sense, oxidation is like burning uh, the soil organic carbon uh, without effectively using a flame. So it's a, it's a chemical process. Uh, it's the exchange of uh, electrons in a particular way. But anyways, it produces carbon dioxide. So really there's only two ways. There's a biological way to uh, lose soil organic carbon, and then there's a chemical means uh, which soil organic carbon can also be lost. So with that in mind, let's consider a classic wheat enterprise. Say we finish harvesting at the end of, or around December. We will basically leave that ground either bare or for practicing stubble retention, we'll leave it without roots. And so we'll either leave it bare or without roots for everything up to around May. So if you think about that, that's about five months of nothing growing except weeds. And guess what? We're going to be applying, say, uh, a herbicide um, here or a tillage pass. So either, so typically over your fallow, you're going to be applying a herbicide or um, plowing it up to get rid of your weeds. So we're going to be applying one herbicide here, uh, clean everything up, maybe one during fallow and then one just prior to planting. And then from there, so we, uh, we're planting around May, we're going to put down a fertilizer, we're going to put a seed coat, a uh, fungicide seed coat on our seed, uh, and then we're going to plant it. That's going to take a little while to um, develop a full canopy and establish. In that time, we might apply, uh, apply another herbicide. Um, during the, the growing season, we might apply fungicide and more high analysis fertilizer. We're going to get uh, around four months of effective photosynthesis where the plant's actually photosynthesizing and taking those sugars that it produces in photosynthesis and pumping it into the soil. So we get four months of that, uh, and then from there we get basically the wheat dies down. It's not really photosynthesizing anymore, it's going into a reproductive stage, it's taking those nutrients that it gave to the microbes and pumping it back up into uh, the seed. So from everything we've kind of learnt from the previous videos in the series, and if this is your first one, go make, uh, make sure to go watch the other ones. Uh, lots of good information on that. The, this whole system is problematic because we're relying on mycosal fungi to take the root extradates and turn it into humus, but we're also relying on the rate of photosynthesis and how much photosynthesis can occur. And what we're doing here is we're really reducing 12 months of the year to four months of effective photosynthesis, but even still, we don't have any uh, mycosal fungi to actually turn that into humus. Now, there is a bit of biomass production, um, especially if you're practicing uh, stubble retention over the fallow. But really, as we've discussed, the decomposition pathway is only around 8% efficient. So it's not a great way to build soil organic carbon. And so there's no wonder why our uh, soil organic carbon levels have gone from 5%, which is pre-European um, uh, uh, settlement, to, around, or to less than 2.8%. And, and even still, we're seeing soils, you know, around one and, and lower than that. Um, but considering all this, we're not really pumping much uh, carbon into the soil and the, and the carbon that is pumped in the soil isn't being converted into humus by mycosal fungi. Around 80% of the mycosal fungi populations have been destroyed in our soils. So really there's, there's really not much there. A lot of our soils are filled with decomposers and that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna decompose the uh, carbon inputs back into atmospheric carbon. Now that in itself is not bad and decomposers have their role in a soil ecosystem. 
However, if it's making up the whole ecosystem, that can be bad because you're only getting a particular function in your soil and we want all the functions in our soil. So really there's a few mechanisms in this which make it particularly bad. The first one is the short, a short amount of effective photosynthesis. Now it's understandable because you want to have uh, as much water in your soil profile as possible. However, there's a few things we can change with this and we'll talk about that in a future video about maximizing soil sequestration in uh, cropping enterprises. But um, yeah, you have four months of effective photosynthesis uh, and then you're killing all your good microbes with your herbicide and tillage applications. You're applying high analysis fertilizer, which is going to uh, reduce your microbes and fungi populations anyways, and reduce the uh, colonization of your plants when you put that down. A fu uh, fungicide seed treatment, also going to kill microbes or fungi and prevent it from colonizing the plant. So really, again, everything we're pumping into the ground during this short space, we're going to be losing it because we're not actually capturing it. Now we're not going to get into uh, actually building soil organic carbon in this video. This is more about preventing the loss. So if you have 3%, how do you keep at that 3% uh, without going down? And so generally keeping your ground covered uh, really important for um, protecting your microbes. We're going to go no-till. The problem with tillage is that it uh, inverts the soil and aerates, it breaks up your soil aggregates, exposing your soil organic carbon to UV light, allowing it to oxidize. And we don't want that. So we want to protect our soil uh, and the soil organic carbon by practicing no-till. We want to reduce pesticides and herbicides. So these actually oxidize the soil organic carbon as well, um, as well as destroy a lot of the beneficial microbes. High analysis fertilizers, uh, especially nitrogen can then further ox oxidize uh, soil organic carbon, which obviously we don't want. So we want to reduce high analysis fertilizers and there's ways we can do that and we'll talk about it, that in a future video, but some of that involves uh, fulvic acid and uh, or humic substances to buffer uh, the high analysis fertilizers. Uh, and then finally, if we're in a grazing situation, we want to uh, graze in a regenerative manner or holistic or amp grazing or however you'd like to describe it. But effectively, that's just not overgrazing and giving enough uh, rest time for our, our pastures to recover. So if you get all of this, uh, there's a good chance you're going to be building soil organic carbon anyways, but you'll definitely stop the loss of soil organic carbon. Again, this is on our website. So if you go to agrisol.com.au, you can check out supplementary material as well as all the other videos in the series. Uh, my name's Till. Thanks for watching. Cheers.